Welcome to Tail Learn Code. Here there will be tales about software development, learning from each other, code to build solutions. And now your host, Chad Green. All right, welcome everyone. I'm glad everyone could, uh, could join us tonight. Uh, and tonight, I'm really pleased to have uh, Cross Conception. Uh, this is this is the cool part about Copa Lewis is I get to meet a lot of new people. Uh, most people I've been interviewing, I, I actually have known for years, but, uh, so Crocs, I have, you know, I've not had the pleasure to meet you yet. Uh, unfortunately we have to meet virtually instead of in person this year. Um, can you speak, can you say something? I'm not sure if your audio is coming through. Yeah, testing, oh, testing. yeah it's coming. All right. Oh, I, I thought maybe you said something a moment ago and <laughs> it might've just been me. So, um, so yeah. And it, the other part of what I love, you know, about, Having someone like Crux is, I mean, this is, this is a little bit different kind of, of speaker than we normally have, right? Because Crux not, he doesn't spend his whole career in technology and, and, and writing, you know, slinging code or writing requirements or that type of thing. Uh, really, I mean, yeah, number one, I mean, he's uh, you know, a veteran of, of law enforcement uh, and has recently been, you know, uh, studying psychology, uh, working towards his uh, PhD for, for psychology, uh, which just sounds awesome to, to hear that you know you've been you know that's second life after retirement right that, that's really yes, really cool yes exactly so with that i mean other than you know you're working your phd i mean you know tell us so who who are you okay uh my name is crux conception uh, it's a pseudonym for crisis intervention and i'm an educator part-time educator adjunct professor a retired law enforcement officer homicide detective uh and currently a doctoral candidate working on my PhD uh, in forensic psychology. Uh, I reside in the state of Indiana, uh, 24 years of law enforcement under my belt, 12 years of uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. Cool, so I mean, for the uninitiated, what, I mean, what is forensic psychology? Forensic psychology is the, if it's the deep, background of a of a psych like for instance say for instance uh i was asked to conduct a fri for a uh, forensic background on a subject and once i talked to that subject i would uh do the whole family tree background uh work uh family members uh, uh, relatives history involving uh any psychological disorders or any uh violent anything that can uh trigger trigger a response of uh, abnormal be behavior. Uh, that's what forensic uh, psychology is. It's a d it goes deeper than just a guesstimation or uh, profiling, which, which I do, I'm guilty of it. Uh, it's a science, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a evidence, but it's science, it's a tool, so. I, I, one, I, I've, I've often loved psychology. I've been a, a avid uh, study of it. I have my a, a bachelor's in it. I have a bachelor's in crimin criminology and psychology, a bachelor's in forensic, or master's in forensic psychology. And I uh, like, I do, because my, there's a mental, there are mental illness in my family and I wanted to study it and I wanted to keep a, uh, uh, keep a grasp on it, keep an eye on it. I wanted to know it better. I wanted to embrace it instead of fear. And I always have a, a, a quote, one of my favorite quotes is uh, 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 dance with your fear, you know? So, and I, I so I want to dance with it. And uh, I had about a, uh, actually a depression. I was diagnosed with PTSD and uh, this made me want to even research it even more. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for your service. Thank you. There we go. They lost my audio there for a moment. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Sean, for that. Let me know that. Uh, um, oh. I was getting comments on, on the chat that uh, lost my audio. I was typing something. I, I paused my audio for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, my keyboard is really loud. <laughs> and the mic is sitting right here, so it picks it all up. But uh, uh, so no, I, uh, what I was saying, uh, 
while my audio was turned off was that uh, you know we were talking about you know surprising there aren't, there aren't as much PTSD cases in law enforcement and military for that matter you know, just I mean it's a uh, that's a, it's a very stressful job very very hard job yeah. uh, um, so but uh, I, so I'm curious why, why did you become a police officer oh it's uh... <laughs> I didn't have a choice. I wanted to, <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm, I wanted to be a doctor. I actually okay. I wanted to be a medic, not a, a doctor, but a medic, uh, an army medic. Uh, my dad's a former special forces, Green Beret, and I wanted to be a special force medic. Uh, that was my dream. But uh, there's 17 of us in law enforcement, a federal, state, a local, um, and um, they, there's 17 of us. And like my mom says, she says we're the black version of the TV show Blue Blood. So I really didn't have a, I didn't have a choice. After I graduated from college, my dad was like, hey, you got to get a job and you're going to follow the family trait. So I'm like, okay. So my twin brother and I joined the uh, uh, police department in 94. And right after 9-11, he went to the FBI and I joined the U.S. Marshals. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. So uh, were you, were you, uh, basically hunting down fugitives or were you doing something yeah, else? With that, my part was I, I use, use behavioral profiling to track down on, on a, you're on certain teams and units as a uh, fug on a fugitive squad or a warrant squad or whatever. And my job was not my, my job was to uh, profile the individual profile where they're, mm -hmm. uh, where they're going to lay their head at, where, how are they going to disguise themselves? What name are they going to go under? Where's their next city they're going to visit? You know, and that was my job to profile that. I'm curious, so how long would you work on, on a particular case normally? Ooh, man, until it's solved. Being, well, well, yeah, you, but... you work it to you work it to the bone. Uh, and be honest with you, the one show as a as a former homicide detective, one show I could not stand is uh, Forty Eight Hours because it's true they gave away our secrets. If you have a career criminal watching this or future crim career criminal. Watch 48 Hours because they give away all our secrets. Right. Uh, they do. I mean, back in the day when I was homicide, uh, you read somebody your rights and they sign off and they talk to you. Nowadays, you read their rights and they say, I want a lawyer because mm -hmm. they watch 48 Hours, you know, so. And they got their, and don't get me wrong, they got every right to ask for a lawyer. I would, you know, right, right. stupid not to, not to so. Oh, it's funny you say that. I, I, I was waiting for you to say, oh, because it was so wrong or, or, or you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but it, 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 nowadays, you know, it, when I came, when I was in um back in 94, uh, the game was different. People would come and knock on your door and they would say, hey, my baby got something to tell you or uh, they know something. They need to talk to you. And they drag the kid by the ear into the house, to your own house, in your living room. You sit down, you have a conversation and the case would get started and eventually solved. Nowadays, people don't want to talk to the police, and mm -hmm. I I hate to say this, I love police. I like again my 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 uh, it's in my blood, but I can see why people don't want to talk to police. You know, you just you know did this to my cousin. Why am I going to try to help you solve a case, even though it's a homicide? Why am I going to try to help you solve a case when you you know treat me like crap? So, yeah. Well, and sure, I was going to ask about this, and, and you, you're more than welcome to say you know not answer right, but okay, I mean, uh, you know. With everything going on this summer, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, this yeah. is a bit of, you know, and I'm curious because, again, like I said, I've talked to some of my, my friends who are, who are, you know, lifelong uh, law enforcement. I mean, what, what is your general sentiment about, uh, you know, not so much just the Black Lives Movement, because obviously yeah. you're personally affected by Black Lives Movement, but the, you know, what's going on between, with the police departments? Yeah, you know, and I'm on, I'm on the, I'm on the edge, you know, because obviously I'm African American, or I'm a black man. I don't like to say African American uh, because it sounds like America had to co-sign on us being. I gotta admit, here, I have to admit, know, I like the fact that we're. Black. I gotta admit, yeah. I like the fact that we're going back from African American, Black American. Yeah. Uh, and again, I, I want. I'll, I'll call you whatever you want me to call you, but uh, um, it just seemed more. You know, it seemed more right, right. It, it, and you know what? Here's the thing. My grandmother, both my grandmothers, they grew up in an era where they were called uh, Negro. Then they were called co no, colored Negro. And it, they, that's what that's the word they mm -hmm. used. I grew up in an era where I was called black. And I, and to me, um, I'm black. 
you know, come on now. I'm, I don't need you to say I'm African-American. You know, for all you know, my family could have come from England, right. you know, so <laughs> uh, which which is uh, I've just found out was an insult to call somebody from England back in the day. Call a black person from England as an insult. Oh. I just found that out. <laughs> so uh, but yeah. And uh, as a law enforcement, you know, as both being, you know, that man, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you see things and I didn't really see I, for 24 years. I never saw racism. I never saw color until I joined uh, a gang unit. And when mm. I was on the gang unit, I saw that aggressive policing is another word for racial profiling. Um, at proactive policing, words they use now, is another word for racial profiling. Uh, police culture is a word that you can, you can hide behind police culture. Say, for instance, you're a police officer and I'm a suspect and we're in a foot pursuit and you're jogging four or five blocks and you finally catch me. Everybody knows what comes next is a beat down. You've got, it is, it's natural. If you didn't like me because of the color of my skin, you can hide behind that culture. And nobody would ask the stinks the second you going upside my head because it's part of the culture. You know, I don't, I don't think we need to defund the police. If we do, I think there needs to be a clearer definition of what they mean to defund. I think that, um, I think officers need to rotate. You know, mm -hmm. say, for instance, uh, we I don't know what they call them in uh, Louisville, but in in Indiana, this is Mer This uh, I would be in like George District or Mary District. Mary District would be the high crime area. I think officers should rotate. They shouldn't be in that area for more than uh, six months. And I think they rotate up to a, uh, you know, another area because it's just like uh, vice and narcotics and and uh, the FBI, the FBI. Uh, say, for instance, my brother wanted to transfer to Fort Wayne, Indiana. He couldn't because Hoover thought a long time ago, and this is probably one of the only things I agree with him, that if you're close to that area for a while, you're going to get corrupted somehow. Mm. And so, and th that's what they do to vice and narcotics officers. They're only vice and narcotics officers for like, in, in, in Fort Wayne, it's eight years. Then they have to move out because they think they, they may get too attached to that culture and that lifestyle. And I was vice and narcotics and it did. I would come home using street slang and didn't even know I was, you know, talking right. street slang. So, yeah. No, that was interesting. And, um, well, I was going to ask you, so you, you don't have much in technology, right? I mean, other than no. you just... And what, and what I tell people, I, and here's the thing, I spoke last year before COVID, I spoke over 34 times. Mm -hmm. And I got 16 originally written lectures, and they're based on research, and it's based on psychology, team building, uh, behavioral profiling, and uh, criminal profiling, and social engineering. And out of all those places, only people that accepted me, accept my talks, were the tech community. <laughs> I never, mental, mental health has never come to ask me to speak. Law enforcement has never come to ask me to speak. The only people that embrace me are techs. Wow. And one thing I noticed and I tell them, I said, yeah, you're wondering why I'm here talking about team building or talking about social engineering. I said, one thing as a former investigator, former homicide detective, one thing we got in common, whether you're in DevOps, uh, whatever, uh, you like you like to get to the truth. You like problem solving. Oh, yeah. And when I say and like you're doing that, when I say that, you're like, yeah, yeah. And that's the key number one key factor in technology, whether you're a programmer, uh, anything, you know, engineer, anything. Uh, it's a problem solving. And that's one thing that we have in common. And I took like like uh, we're having a conversation. I took it's called active listening. What you just did like that. Was active listening. It shows me that you're listening, and it maybe encouraged me to continue. And I teach people how to use that as a team building skill. And I took all the cop out, all the ten four Rogers, uh, you know, you know seven eighty six six five, which those are no don't Google them. There's no such thing as that. In, 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 in. So, so, uh, so, but I would say that uh, so that. Um, you know, we get together and these skills and people know that, man, and what I tell people, I, I was in Croatia and I said, uh, uh, I, I, every time I get off stage, I always find the event organizer and I say, how do I, uh, what do I need to work on? I never ask, how do I do it? How mm -hmm. do I do? Or, you know, I always say, what do I need to work on? And one guy, he said, uh, the event organizer said it was practical and I kind of took offense to it at first, but 
he's right. It is practical. There's no science to this. These are skills like you're doing like now in the conversation we're having, you know, um, and you knew a little and you knew a little about my background and you and you use that to strike the conversation and talk. And that's active listening. You know, and if we can do that in social life, why can't we do it in, in a leadership position or a team position? Well, it's interesting because uh, um, I think in tech, so one, I mean, you, you did hit the nail on, on the head about the, the problem solving, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone yeah. who's in tech because they love tech, right? And they mm -hmm. love writing applications. The reason why they love writing applications is because of problem solving, right? And I, yes. I, mean, I, I mean, that's the biggest reason why I've been doing this for 30 plus years, right? It's just, uh -huh. I just yeah. love solving problems, right? Uh -huh. uh, uh, so you definitely hit the nail there. Uh, the interesting part, is, but also in tech, uh, most folks in tech are, are very introverted, very, you know, very uh, closed off. And I don't mean closed minded, you know, because actually I think most people in tech are more open minded, but, but uh, definitely are closed off. Right? We, we protect ourselves. We, you know, we, we live in our bubbles. Uh, um, so I, I, that's why I think speakers like you really help out tech. Uh, um, there's been a renaissance past oh, five or six years. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. You, you look about five or six years ago at tech conferences and the yeah. number of soft skill talks, mm -hmm. there'd be a couple, right? There'd be two yeah. or three. And it's usually always the same thing. Most of them were how to work remotely, right? Because there, there were a lot of those. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then a couple would be like how to become a, how to become a, a manager, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I can run whole conferences on, on soft skill talks now because, because yeah. you know, the industry has really realized we need that better, right? Yes. And, and uh, and again, when I, you know, I know when we saw your, uh, your submission, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we picked it because it was like, oh, look, number one, look what he's going to cover. But then two, yeah. it's someone outside of tech, right? It's someone who's taking a psychology look into it yeah. as opposed to, you know, I mean, I, I could probably do a similar talk. Uh, yeah. But mine would have been more of, well, this is what I think, right? You know, because <laughs> this is what's worked for me, right? Uh, yeah. uh, whereas, you know, you, you'll be, you know, you'll be able to take, hey, Here's what I've been studying as part of my PhD and part of my, you know, my bachelor's that I worked on, um, along with, I mean, when we talk about having to understand people, you know, uh, you know, any good police officer needs to be able to understand people. Yeah. That's how they become a, a good police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so no, that's, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, well, let's just talk about your, your presentation you're going to be doing. So you're, you're going to be doing a, a half day workshop. Uh, yes. So soft skills and group dynamics and communication skills equals productive team projects. Yes. Um, so I mean, I mean, title kind of gives it away, but I mean, what, what is going to be the takeaway for someone who attends that? The, the takeaway for this is going to be no matter who's in your team, no matter if you like him or her, it, whether if you guys have the same politics, oppositional politics, whatever, you have to, and I repeat, have to respect their skills. If you respect their skills, the personality stuff goes out the window. I don't care if they're a drama king or queen, uh, 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 you know what, stir or what. You respect their skills. You leave them alone. You let them do their skills and you let them know that they are the king, uh, king or queen of that position. They will give you A plus product. What I say is when I when I say that, but you have to you not have to talk to them. You have to just listen. More more people want to be heard than anything in the world, and listening to them and not being insincere, but being sincere and listening to them builds rapport. When you build rapport, you build a kinship. When you build a kinship, you build a working will, and that will runs like a well oiled machine. And it's been, it's been proven. It's been it's studied. Uh, the FBI uses active listening in their hostage negotiations. I use it in personal life, uh, whether it's personal or business, and and I use it. Mm -hmm. And I say and I tell people in the speech where there was a time when I didn't use it when I was suffering PTSD, and I lost everything. Mm -hmm. And if I would have used those skills, I would have still you know had the life that I had. But then I wouldn't have this life, and I love this life better. <laughs> yeah. it, it, well, it's all, it's awesome to hear that you were able to you know turn a bad situation into a much better situation, right? It's uh, unfortunately not everyone can do that, right? It's, yeah, they can, yeah. Uh, so um, I mean, 
So is this session more meant for the team leads or meant for everybody or? You know what, it's meant for anybody, everybody. Mm -hmm. It's designed for teams, but when you leave, you're gonna say, man, these are skills that I had. You're gonna go home talking to your husband and wife, shaking your head, giving the act of nod. You're gonna do repeated verbs. You're gonna, uh, instead of say, I know how you feel, or I know what you're going through, you're gonna say, man, I can see the excitement in your eyes, or I can hear the, the, you know, the, the anger in your voice. Mm -hmm. so, and that, that lets people know that you're listening. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, as far I mean, as you were describing the takeaway, I, you know, it's, it just made me think, you know, I've always said I, I don't have to like you to to work with you, right? You know, it's yeah. uh, 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 and never been. I mean, I've had very large teams, right? I, I had yeah. a team of six three people one time. You obviously you're not going to like all six three people. It's just yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry exactly. for those people who worked with me. There were some of you I didn't like, right? But but uh, uh, yes. but you didn't know it, right? Because because I didn't worry about that, right? I worried about yeah. you know uh, um, making sure that I understood what, where everyone was coming from. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the funny thing is, is so I run a, a, a Louisville Tech Leaders, and uh, we have very open and frank conversations. But I always tell everyone, yeah. uh, one of the rules is, if a name gets mentioned, it never leaves this, this, you know, this space, because just because someone doesn't work well on this team, doesn't mean they're not going to be a star on another team. Yeah. All right. And uh, and a lot of that, you know, really goes into what you're talking about, you know, being able to uh, to really look at what the person's doing, what, you know, uh, you know, the act of listening, right? You know, listening, yeah. not listening to just what they're saying, but listening to what, what they really are saying. Exactly. Uh, um, exactly. I know, I, I, hopefully at times, because there are times I, I hide things, so I'm like, I'm hoping you're not noticing that I don't like them. Right? But, I, you know what? <laughs> my mom was like that, and my mom used to tell her, she used to tell me when we had deep conversations, she said, wait, man, I need a break. And I'm like, well, she said, you're like, she said, you're the black Hannibal Lecter. I don't want you inside my head. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it, yeah, it, it pays off and it's beneficial. It, it is. It, if you practice it and you, if you practice it, you'll realize that you're not practicing it. You're realizing that you're utilizing skills you already have as a human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, cool. So, um, I mean, Trina, I, how has it been, you know, I mean, obviously you've transitioned from, you know, being law enforcement to, uh, uh, you know, to teaching and studying. I mean, you know, how has that transition been? It's been great. It's been fast. It's been overwhelming um, because everything took off so fast. I, and it took off great. Um, I, um, I love the, I love Budapest. There's a, place i was at I don't, I know i don't know if i can mention it here so oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, oh okay yeah it was a prezi conference uh stretch conference they changed that changed my life mm -hmm. it did i did i got up on that stage and i spoke before like two thousand people and it changed my life oh, wow. and i awesome. knew that's what i wanted to do i knew speaking was in my um in in, in my uh future is either as a as an educator or as a uh you know as a retired law enforcement i knew speaking was in my blood uh, I won a, my sophomore year in college, I won a major speaking contest and I, I just knew, and I, I was doing it, um, I was doing it like as a, I don't want to say amateur, yeah, amateur for like a year, two years. And uh, it just, I, I knew this was uh, what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, no, what I love is I was uh, actually just, just this weekend, I was, because uh, I was doing a little bit of research and figuring out who you were and uh -huh. uh, I was watching a video of you. Um, I believe you were in Dallas uh, sometime last year, and uh, oh, Dallas, yeah. and what I like is because I mean here right right now you're 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 exhibiting very confident you know you actually yeah. started a conversation you were, yeah. you're talking about how your hands were, were right here you're talking about the reason why I'm doing this oh, I can't, no one can see it right but the reason why I'm yeah. doing this is because I'm actually really scared of all you guys right yeah. and, and this yeah. is my barrier right yeah. uh, um, so one I'm curious I mean since then do you need less of a barrier. Or... Yeah, I do. I, I do. I always do, and I, I love that. I'm glad you mentioned that. I love that speech. Uh, 
that speech, I changed the name of it too. I, at first I was reluctant to change it. I was like, I'm not gonna change it. And But after the recent events that we just talked about, uh, I changed it. It was called Tech Lives Matter, Hands Up, Don't Reboot. It's about dealing with stress in the tech field. And it talks about the Dr. Dre method about de uh, decrypting or uh, recognizing, decrypting, recording, rebooting uh, energy. It spells out Dr. Dre and it, tells, it shows people how to deal with stress in the tech field and it was based off interviews i think of over 300 1300 people anonymously in the tech field uh answered some questions for me and sent them back and it was astonishing me and come to find out it's law enforcement technology and uh uh, uh medical profession are the three highest stressful jobs and mm -hmm. I, I didn't know tech was up there like that yeah 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 well it's uh, uh it's funny because I'll, I'll finish the day at work and and I'll tell my wife, oh, I'm, I'm worn out. And she's like, what do you mean? You've been sitting down all day long. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same thing, right? I'm not just yeah. sitting, right? You know, it's, uh, um, and it's probably what's a good thing that you changed the name of, the, of that Yeah, document. yeah, yeah. They, yeah, matter of fact, they were so nice, the event organizers. Uh, I did it in uh, in Utah at a DevOps, and they were like, yeah, we struggled with it because the sponsors are struggling with it. I said, do they know I'm black and I used to be a cop? And they were like, yeah, but they still struggling with it. And then Dallas was like, yeah, we struggled with it too, but we decided to put you on. And that's when I changed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just call it, I call it the message or stress in, is uh, stress, the stress in tech. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah and sure enough, I've, uh, you know, there, there are times where, you know, we're like you say, well, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a black man, I'm a cop, you yeah. know, why should this matter? I say this well, <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. And, I, and that's why I've, I mean, I've learned, I, you know, I, there's a lot of things I don't say, uh, on, you know, online and such. Yeah. And, and, uh, I never, it's never like I'm hiding my true feelings. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just generally don't go too much into it. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, for example, I mean, interesting part. I mean, this year we've got some really interesting speakers. I mean, like you, but I've got, I've got someone who's running for, uh, for the Kentucky legislator. Oh, and, really? and uh so i'll be he's actually uh i'll be interviewing him tuesday night i believe or tuesday oh, afternoon i gotta watch that yeah and um you know i was asking him i'm like hey am i allowed to ask you you know uh political questions because you know make sure i don't violate any campaign laws and yeah. and i told him i said yeah i i generally stick away from from politics yeah. online i said this will be the one day where i'll talk about politics because i'm talking to someone who's trying to be a you know a yeah. elected politician but uh yeah, just like, I mean, you know, I'm asking you the questions about race because, you know, I want to hear yep. from you, right? You know, someone who actually experiences more. Um, yep. I'm actually trying, I, I have another uh, uh, black gentleman who, who uh, so far we have not arranged an a interview yet, but okay. I've really been, I wanted to talk to him because I want to hear his side of being a black man in technology. Because yeah. there are not that many. I mean, that's the honest truth, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we need to improve that. Uh, it, it, yeah, and it's, uh, I, I, uh, I think it's, be I, you know, I did a lecture in uh, Philadelphia about how to recruit minorities, because I think the same way law enforcement recruits law minorities, it's the same way technology recruits minorities. And it's the same uh, way the minorities feel when they're being recruited. What I found out is a lot of kids at campus, a lot of minorities on campus, they, when they see the, you know, the events and the fairs, they don't go because they they feel that they're going to be uh, intimidated by the tech technology mm. term and lingo. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, unfortunately technology, there, there's a, there is a bit of a barrier to entry. Yeah. Um, and I mean, um, I think it's really for anyone, you know, and, and uh, uh, but I can see that, right? You know, it's, yes. uh, um, I mean, if you're already marginalized as a general, and then you're going to get marginalized because everyone who comes in gets marginalized. Yeah, I, I can see. Uh, um, now, I might have misunderstood. Were you saying that uh, tech should uh, recruit like uh, police officers do or not? No, they, they should okay. use the minority, the law enforcement, and the technology have the same type of recruiting methods and they need to change mm -hmm. in order to recruit my, more minorities effectively, qualified minorities effectively. Sure. I mean, well, I mean, so what should we be looking for? I mean, how, how should we change that? I think that, that there should be more 
uh, uh, representatives at the universities more. You don't even have to have a black representative. Uh, have more representatives that uh, you know change their photos, change their uh, their pamphlets, put minorities in the fa- mm-hmm. pamphlets, uh, in the pictures. That uh, studies have found. You see it on uh, mortgages or bank loan billboards and stuff. More uh, companies have found out research that it attracts more it attracts individuals it gives them the chance to say okay well maybe i might not be looked down down upon or maybe i'm you know maybe get it may get a fair shake and it, and it attracts them more to come and yeah uh i think that you don't have a just a sole minority as a recruiter but bring them brain have a minority as a representative mm-hmm. there as well you know so and you'll see uh they'll sit there at their booth and you'll see who uh who comes to who the you know the the uh, the Caucasians will gravitate towards the uh, Caucasian rap and the minorities will gravitate towards the minority rap. I know it's sad and I know it's a, uh, you know, a, a stale method, but it's the only method right now that I believe based on research and peer review is a technique that will work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the sad part is that you're not really asking to do much, right? I mean, you yeah. know, uh, change some of the pictures and, and make sure you have a representative. I mean, that's really not, uh, uh, oh, I mean, other than the fact that there's not enough representation already, so it's hard to find representatives to show up. But, you know, uh, outside of that, I mean, change your pictures is like one of the easiest things in the world you could do. Yeah. Uh, um, now, and, and, you know, the hard part, and, and uh, you know, in technology, so technology, we we fight this problem even more so than than, than the general public, because mm-hmm. not only do you have the issues of you know uh, representation within the workforce and so forth. You know, I mean, we you know, we have to deal with uh, you know, ethics uh, of artificial intelligence and, and yes. pattern matching because you know, a lot of models weren't built to to take your type of face in, right? You know, it's, it was yeah. more of my face, right? Did you read my Did you read my bio or something? <laughs> no, well, <laughs> again, this is. It hasn't been picked up yet when I try to pitch it or when we try to pitch it, but I did. It's about, it's talking about an investigation I had where a man was convicted for seven years on. He was falsely uh, accused and falsely identified through facial recognition. Mm-hmm. And we found out that it's not, it's not, you know, they don't, the scans don't scan uh, uh, African American or black people like they do Caucasians because of our pigmentation. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. So there is that, that problem. I, I was, uh, I was at an event last year. And it was a talk about ethics in, in artificial intelligence. Yeah. And the speaker, she was showing videos of, of how it's failing. Like they yeah. were showing a, a, a soap dispenser. And the whole idea, you put your hand underneath and it dispenses soap, right? Yeah. Black guy puts his hand underneath, soap comes out. Black guy puts his hand underneath, exactly. nothing comes out, right? The white guy puts it back, right? It works just fine, right? Yes. Uh, it, I mean, it's one of those things, you know, unfortunately, yeah. people just don't think about it, right? Yeah. Uh, I, like I said, I think the industry is is trying to be better. Yeah. Uh, I, I, still a long long way to go with that. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's, it's a tough stuff. Now I'm curious because you talk about uh, you know the research you've done. Mm-hmm. So I um, just a couple of weeks ago I was hearing about a case of someone who who was uh, wrongly uh, he wasn't convicted. He was only uh, arrested. He was wrongly arrested, mm-hmm. uh, um, but it was based upon you know, uh, face ma- or pattern matching his yeah. face and right. such, and, and basically, yeah, it, now I heard this on the radio, so I didn't hear. Yeah, I didn't see pictures, but basically, yeah. they were saying the guy looked nothing like yeah, like. I with, know exactly you know. what you're talking about. Yeah, and, and uh, one of the fallacies within facial recognition when it comes to people of color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, uh, you know, one of the things I was curious about that case. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and Gretchen, this isn't really your your realm of expertise, but. You know, I mean, so so his lawyers fought to have his picture taken out mm-hmm. of the facial database or facial recognition yeah. database. And of course, my argument was he actually should have left it in because it actually would have helped future black men yeah. because you know yeah. the more the more we have in there, the better the models yeah. can be. And that's it too. You know, the database for African Americans is very low. You know, compared to and compared to the database of uh, of Caucasians around the world. So do, yeah. you, do you think that uh, you think black America is, is fear? I don't want to say fearful, but, you know, um, almost fearful of, of having their pictures in these type of databases. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know quite a few. But then again, I, I know a privacy attorney and she there. You know, we were uh, there. We were in Detroit one time and they uh, they have a special where they have blue lights 
flashing in the uh, restaurants or the uh, places of public establishment. And uh, the blue lights represent that they have facial recognition cameras mm. uh, set up in there. And it warns, it, it shows people that it's a pro police friendly place. And that if you come in here, you're going to get camera. We had a debate on that, you know, from a from me as being in law enforcement and from uh, her perspective as a, a you know, privacy and, you know, and it is, yeah, it made sense. You know, uh, people have a right to privacy. It's, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's one of our, it's one of our fundamental privileges. So. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's a tough battle, right? Uh, um, it, it, it is. It is. You know, and again, I, admittedly, I, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm a veteran. So I, I, I have a tendency to look at things a little bit differently. Uh, uh, you know, because as a veteran, and not everyone realizes this when they join, but uh, you know, we give up our rights, right? I mean, that's part of being on active duty, right? You're, you're giving up your rights. Uh, um, and I generally say, look, I, you know, I gave up my rights so that morons can, can say what they want to say, right? Yeah. And uh, so I sometimes have a hard time of like, well, I might not agree with the person. He might be a complete moron, but uh, I'm going to let him say that because, I mean, you know, I, you know, I quote unquote fought. I, I never actually yeah. fired a weapon in, 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 a, in a wartime, but uh, yeah. uh, but I was trained for it, right? Yes. Uh, so, I, but you do bring up the interesting part about the privacy part of it, right? Uh, uh, and I definitely I agree with that part of it, right? But, mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Know. It's interesting because, like I say, as I hear more and more, I mean, that's part of what you hear in the summer of well, we need you know a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of states have banned the use of, of facial recognition and everything. I'm like, well. Mm -hmm. Is that really the right thing, or are we doing is stalling, improving that situation for a couple of years? Because now we've got a ban for a couple of years, we're not going to do any work on it. Yep. Which you know, and, and honest truth is, corporate America is not going to work on it if there's no money on it. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I mean, cause it, because you know, corporate America has to pay people to do it, right? It's you know, it's uh, you know, we, we could be as altruistic as we want to, but in the end, you know, we got to feed our families, right? Hey, that's yeah, that's the bottom goal. So bottom line, you know, main goal. So mm -hmm. yeah. So um well I'm curious. So I mean, what do you like to do for fun? Oh man. <laughs> um I like uh reading. I'm work I, I'm finishing up well actually my book is uh complete, it's just going through the uh, editorial phase, at uh, edit editorial phase, sorry. And uh just um um, I like to fly drones. I'm a drone for now. Okay. A, I, I got eight drones. And matter of fact, the, the company that I get the drones from, they, they're one of my sponsors. So I'm an avid, you know, drone uh, fanatic. Um, and I, I, I'm working on something right now that I think it may be a game changer. I really do. Oh, you know, really? I really do. It's a, especially since the world of virtual, um, virtual uh, conferencing has come on. Uh, man, you know, everybody's like, man, don't say nothing to nobody. That's just a game changer. Don't say anything <laughs> to anybody. And I said, you know what? If I say it, because they're like, don't say it on the, uh, my team. was like, don't say anything about that on the show. Uh, they said somebody could beat you, too. I said, you know what? I think that if they can, that's more power to them. But their show, the way I, because I, I, I believe I'm an edutainer. I educate mm -hmm. and I entertain at the same time. I said, nobody's going to fly it like me, you know? So, uh, but yeah, we're working with a company right now and, uh, my whole presentation on social, not social engineering, but uh, Tech Lives Matter, uh, or not Tech Lives Matter, sorry, excuse me. The uh, <laughs> stress in tech will be in, the, be in the image of a video game, and I'll be on stage in a video oh, game. Cool. And, the av and people can select their own avatars and sit, sit in the stage. And so, yeah. Well, that will be cool. So, yeah. uh, so with drones, are you doing uh, drone photography? Or are you doing racing the yeah. drones or uh, no 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 just drone photography uh you know back in the day i used to i took it uh, one time i took it thirty thousand feet and i was scared because it took me five minutes to find it and i'm freaking out that was my first drone <laughs> i since i since learned but um yeah I, I fly and i do the photography i do the uh the, i do videos for christmas and i love especially the fourth of july fourth of mm. july I, do, I go i go in the inner city and I fly my drone over the fireworks because the kids like to shoot them down, you know. So I get great cinematic photography, you know, the uh, the the drone and the, the the spark from the firework coming near to almost crashing it. It's just beautiful, and I love it. So yeah, wow. the kids love it, and the kids love it too. Because I, like I said, I got eight, and so if I 
one crashes, then you know I got another one. So I, I don't I don't know about Fort Wayne, but you know here in Louisville, uh, yeah. Fourth of July this year sounded like a war zone. I mean, it was, really, it was <laughs> insane how much fireworks were going off. Yeah, it sounded like a war zone here too. So yeah, my yeah. idol lives in Louis. Oh well, he lived in Louisville. He was born there. I, I saw his grave and Colonel Sanders' grave too. So you guys have a beautiful. I, I never thought this is morbid, morbid, but you guys have one of the most beautiful cemeteries I've ever seen in my life. Cave Hill. Yeah, so yeah. Is that, that's where Muhammad Ali is buried, right? Well, I was about to say, I'm assuming your your idol is, is Muhammad Ali, which yeah, I, I, I saw. I mean, what an awesome, yeah, what an awesome idol to have, right? I mean, it's. I, I literally cried when I met his brother. I hugged him because mm. I, my biggest regret, my bucket list was to meet the, meet the champ before he died because I love him. And I love him for what he did out of the ring because I was too young to remember him, the, the greatness he sure. did in the ring. But out of the ring, man, he was bad. He was cold. He was smoke, man. Yeah. He was beautiful. Yeah. So. Did, did you visit the Muhammad Ali Center? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. pretty neat. Yes, I visited there too. A uh, matter of fact, where I think the Rolls Royce, you weren't supposed to, no, the ring, the boxing ring. Ring. And I was a cop at the time because we had a school resource officer convention in Louisville. And I was a cop at the time, and there was a sign saying, Don't step in the ring. I put on the robe and stepped on the ring and took a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope the statute of limitations is over for that. <laughs> now, I'm curious, are you, uh, are you old enough to remember when uh, Muhammad Ali uh, uh, was the LA Olympics? When he was oh. the final, uh, uh, yeah. um, flame, not flame, uh, what's what I'm trying to think of? The contender, he was the, like, in, oh, no. No. Oh, it, when he ran the flame, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't watch it. And to this day, I didn't watch it. Mm. I just couldn't. I know it was a great thing. And I know people from Louisville, you guys are proud of him, but I just couldn't watch it, man. That was like, you know, that's the time when you, you know, when like my dad is my other hero. And when you find out superhero is not your dad anymore. Well, that, that, that was the whole thing about that, right? I mean, cause, yeah, cause before so that, didn't, we didn't really yeah. understand the, how bad his Parkinson's was, right? Uh, actually, at that point, no one really knew he had Parkinson's, right? I mean, it, it wasn't yeah. a secret, but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like a well-known fact. No, it wasn't like that. And, uh, and I, re I, mean, I remember that vividly watching that and, and just, just the imagination of, oh my goodness, you know, we're talking about, you know, someone who, you know, so, I mean, who, who's the champ? Who's, you know, you know, exactly. float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, you know, all, all that great stuff. Rumble, young man, rumble. Yeah. Ah, and, yeah. and then to see him like that, it was like, oh my goodness, that, that, you know, talk about, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I remember it put tears in my face, right? I mean, it, it was, to me, he was the first rapper. To me, he was the first rapper. I mean, he goes and says, uh, you know, I, I'm so bad, I make medicine sick. I mean, I'm like, to me, that's a lyric. I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. that was cold, yeah. So, yeah, so to me, he was the first rapper. So. Which, and, you know, also funny, I was, uh, uh, I saw a clip of him not too long ago where he was on an interview, and, and I forgot exactly what he said. But basically something like, you know, why are you white people also so silly or something like that, right? You know, yeah. They're talking about the, you know, you know race relationships and everything. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, Granted, I mean, back in those days, you had to have clout like he did to be able to say something like that on the national yes, TV as, exactly. as a black man. Yeah. But I mean, uh, but yeah, he, he was right. Yeah. And I, I, what's that famous quote? You know, he's got so many famous quotes. And, you know, one of them was, I, I got I got no qualm with the Vietnam or Viet Cong, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a famous quote, too. So, yeah. But, yeah. I uh, apparently, Gav the Dead Men uh, just uh, put a link to, to, the, uh, to the interview I was just oh, talking about uh, right, on the right, chat. Right, yeah. Right. Thank you. But yeah, yeah. no, that's yeah. So he, yeah, he to me. I mean, Louisville, man. If I, I would move to Louisville just to be near where he was at. That's how much I love that man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. First thing you know, I mean, his last like forty years, he he was barely here. I mean, he, he maintained yeah. the house yeah, here. I heard he lived in Arizona or somewhere. Like yeah, he, that. he maintained yeah. the house here, but he, you know, he, he wasn't here very often. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was always an honor when he was in town, uh, especially. Yeah. You know, like if you were at the football game or the basketball game and, and you know, yes. you stand up and wave and you know, yeah. always get the biggest, you know, applause. Yeah. And um, people well, said he had did magic tricks for people for just no reason. He'd be at the airport. He'd walk up to an elderly couple or a kids and just do magic tricks for them. And I was like, wow, that's beautiful. Or, or the, yeah, I mean, the cool part, uh, you know, so uh, Louisville, University of Louisville football team. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they go into the fourth quarter, yeah. they, they play a clip. Right, and part of the clip is Muhammad Ali talking about, you know, how awesome he is, and he says, yeah. you know, Louisville is the greatest city in town in the whole wide world. It's going to be, you know, it's a world contender. It's going to be a world champion, which yeah. is 
you know, a really great hype clip it. for yeah. the you know the football team to yeah. uh, to kick off the fourth quarter, yeah. uh, uh, especially since they played that team has been yeah. better. A couple of years ago, it been like, eh, <laughs> we're, we're not so <laughs> great. <laughs> Yeah, because you guys had a Heisman Trophy winner, didn't you? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Teddy, Ted, or not Teddy, but, uh, um, oh, yeah, no. I, I forgot his name. Yeah. Oh, this is going to drive me crazy. Really good kid, too. Uh, and, oh, this is going to drive me crazy. Hold on. I've uh, got to look it up because it's going to drive me crazy, Joel. I know. Let's see, Louisville, Heisman, uh, uh, Lamar Jackson. Okay, yeah. Because I remember I, I saw highlights of him. I said, oh, he's too skinny to go to the pros. He was just real <laughs> frail. But he was a good, I mean, he's a good athlete. So, yeah, so, uh, so my, my daughter's ex boyfriend uh, mm -hmm. was a walk on for, for Louisville. Uh, oh, okay. and so so I, I have met Lamar uh, before. Okay. Okay. A really Great. good kid, right? And, nice and, and okay. uh, you know, uh, the cool part about him, I mean, it was, it was awesome because I mean, before that we had Teddy Bridgewater. So, mm -hmm. two quarterbacks, almost back to back, who, who mm -hmm. you know, weren't all of themselves, right? I mean, they, you know, they, they understood they were part of a system that, you know, that, that it was a whole team that, that made them who they were. Exactly. Uh, um, so, you know, uh, I, I did not get to meet Teddy, but I did get to meet Lamar, and that, that was really yeah. neat to do that. Cool. Uh, especially got me I, where I met, I mean, I met him where uh, all the families wait for, for, the, okay. for the kids to come out, right? How'd you get down there? Uh, well, because like I said, my, my daughter dated uh, uh, one of the players for for uh, over four years, wow. and so uh, which, which was a blast. Because I, I don't know if you if you like football, I love football, yeah. and uh, uh, I actually sat in the family section, you know, all those years, and and, and uh, wow. that was always a lot of fun. Okay, all yeah. Right. But uh, and then, like I said, you know, we would I would go with his family, you know, we we you know, even when my daughter was up at school because right, she. Yeah, uh, most of our school has been been away from Louisville, but uh, uh, you know, I'd be waiting with him with you know, uh, mm -hmm. with his dad who's a cop. Actually, yeah, it was wow. one of those typical Catholic families. Dad was a cop, mom was a Catholic school teacher, right? Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, cool. But uh, uh, yeah, wow. well, cool. I mean, you know, it's been really awesome talking to you. Uh, like I say, I am really looking forward to the, to this workshop. Uh, Me too. Uh, I have a feeling this is gonna be a workshop that I'm gonna reference people to. You know, after fun. the fact, you know, we're going to have a, like they said on Snow Train, going to have a stone blast groove. Yeah. So <laughs> love, peace and soul. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're going to have fun. It's, it's supposed to be learning or not learning, but um, adv advancement, I, I, I think should be fun and and uh, memorable. And you should not only take it away, take something away with you, but you should take something away from whatever workshop or lecture you hear, you should take something away with it with eagerness, not just because you wrote it down and memorized it, but it, it has to it has to fit you. You know, you have to find something, you know, so like going to church, you know, you some people say, you know, you know, if I go, I'll say, hey, before I go in that door, I'll say, hey, please let the word touch me, you know, <laughs> give me, you know, give me some strength or motivation to understand what this man is saying. So, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Like I said, I so I really I appreciate that you uh, you're willing to do this online because well, obviously you know that's yeah. that's the hard part and, and I mean there are there are some who who did pull out which I I had no will will I mean it's uh, yeah I, and I totally understand but no I I, I every time I get uh, offered uh, to speak I'll speak only only speak I can't speak on is the social engineering because that's got some interviews from former uh, individuals in, in the intelligence field mm. that talk about how to manipulate people on social media or how to manipulate people in the tech field who uh, work in uh, sensitive areas and how you can get their be be their friend and gain their trust and and that's just too sensitive and I I regret saying no to that but that's just too sensitive information yeah. so yeah yeah so, no, like I said, I do appreciate it. And I, I really do hope that, uh, you know, after this COVID pandemic is done with, I, yeah. I hope that we get to meet in person. So, like I said, I, I think, I think yeah. you and I would have some really good conversations. I, and you know what? I, one thing I, I didn't never get, I never got a baseball bat. I want to go get one made. So, <laughs> you, that, you, we can go there. So yeah, that would be fun. That would be a I'm lot of fun. Swing, I'm not going to swing, you know, the bat at the batting cage. My buddy James did that, but not my uh, I want to get a bat made. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool because you can get your, your customized your name on it, all that great stuff. Now, do they make it for you that day, or do you have to order it? Uh, I think they make it for you while you wait. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, um, I've actually never been into into the museum. 
Yeah. Uh, but I've walked by it plenty of times, and, and you yeah. can, I mean, you can see them, you know, because yeah. they got windows right there. Uh, 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 you know, you can see the yeah. production. Yeah. Um, so I, and like I said, I've seen people walk away with it. So they, I mean, there must be, because yeah, like I said, I've, you know, been downtown and see people walking with the bats and everything, you know, customize. Yeah. So it, it must be as you wait. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So. Awesome. Okay. I, I really appreciate you joining me uh, tonight. This is, Thank like I said, this has been you. a blast. I really have been looking forward to this. Um, I love the enthusiasm. I saw your email earlier today. Yeah, <laughs> Crocs was like, you know, I'm only three hours away. I, 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 yeah, I, I should just make drive it. in. Yeah. I'm old. I can make it. It's funny because I, I saw that. And I almost responded like, yeah, but please don't. I don't have anywhere for you to sit. <laughs> As you see, this is my space, right? Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Again, I really do appreciate it, and, and uh, you know, we'll definitely be talking uh, in a couple weeks when at Copalooza. Thank you, sir. I appreciate right. it. God bless you. But everybody have a safe week. Great. You too. Stay safe. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.